point of inflection for exponential function. Question is, determine the points of inflection of the curve y equals to e to the power of minus x squared. Now, what is the point of inflection? Point of inflection is a point where the concavity changes. So, if the concavity changes from concave up to concave down, we say it's a point of inflection. Or, when it changes from concave down to concave up, then it's a point of inflection. That means we're trying to find points where the concavity, this is concave up, right? And that is concave down. This point in between is the point of inflection. It could also be like concave down and then concave up. So that also is called point of inflection. So those are the points where the concavity changes. These are called point of inflection, correct? So these two points for us are points of inflection. We'll try to find what are these points. Now how to find these points? Strategy is to find the double derivative, second derivative. That means, so if second derivative is greater than zero that means the curve is concave up right you can hold something on it so if it is concave up but if the second derivative is less than zero then the graph of the curve should be concave down correct so at point of inflection the concavity changes now remember one thing that exactly at point of inflection if derivative is equal to zero, that could be could be a point of inflection. So we need to test it out so after testing. So the test is on either side we have to see if the concavity changes. If it changes, then a point of inflection exists at that point. Otherwise, it does not exist. Correct. So that is how we are going to approach this question. So the function given to us is y equals to e to the power of minus x squared. So what is y dash? y dash equals to derivative of this, which is the function itself, e to the power of minus x squared times derivative of the exponent, which is minus 2x. So that is the first derivative. We can write this, of course, as minus of 2x times e to the power of minus x squared. Now let's find the second derivative. So second derivative is, we'll apply the product rule. So the first function, let us take this as minus 2x. So the first function's derivative is minus 2. So it's minus 2 e to the power of minus x squared plus. We'll write the first function, which is minus 2x times derivative of the second function, which is e to the power of minus x squared. So it is e to the power of minus x squared times the derivative of this function, which is minus 2x. Okay. So that becomes the set second derivative. So let's combine these terms and see what do we get. So here, as you can see, we, get, we can take minus 2 e to the power of minus x squared common, right? So if we take that, so we get minus 2 e to the power of minus x squared as common. Then we get 1 here, right? one here. So we have taken this term common. So we have taken, let us say, minus 2 e to the power of the, these three things we have taken common. So we are left with the other things, which is minus 2 x squared, right? So we are left with minus, let me continue with the black thing. We are left with minus 2 x squared, right? Minus 2 x squared. So that is the second derivative for us. So minus 2 e to the power of minus x square times 1 minus 2 x square. Correct. Now let us find out where are the zeros for this function. So we'll do it on the right side and figure out where are the zeros and then we'll analyze the concavity. So we have a function here which says, let me write down y double dash equals to minus 2 e to the power of minus x square times 1 minus 2 x square. We'll analyze this function. As you can see, the first part, it does not have any zeros, correct? But the second part, because it's approaching 
zero. If x is very large, it can approach zero, but it will never be zero. Correct? Now the second part could have a zero. So where are the zeros for this function? So to find the zeros for this function, what we will do is we'll equate them to zero. So the second factor, one minus two x squared equal to zero, it implies what? It implies x is equals to plus minus square one over square root two, correct? So if this is zero at plus minus one over square root two. So if therefore the critical points for us are at x equals to plus minus one over square root two. Right? So those are the critical points. So we are saying these are possible, let us say, two points where we could have a point of inflection. Now to check the concavity, we have to see on either side, as we explained here earlier, whether second derivative is positive or negative, right? So let's analyze that part. So when is this function positive? So 1 minus 2x squared, when is this positive? So we say is greater than 0. So we'll solve this inequality. So we can say that we can take 2x squared on the other side. So we say when 1 is greater than 2x squared or half is greater than x squared, right? Then we have a positive thing, right? This function whole is positive. Now imagine if this function is positive, then there's a negative sign here. So it is basically a negative value of y dash, y double dash, correct? So if 1 minus 2x squared is positive, y double dash is going to be negative. So it will be kind of like this. Do you see that? This situation. So we are trying to figure when is that possible. So we get this inequality. Now x squared is less than half means that absolute x is less than 1 over square root 2. Correct? That is what it means. So that means if x is within 1 over square root 2, that factor is positive or y double dash will be negative, correct? Since y double dash is negative times something, correct? So in this case, y double dash is actually less than 0, right? Since it is negative. So that is the case. That is the case when x is between plus minus square root 2. So let's try to sketch this on a number line so that we can kind of relate it to the area where concavity could exist or the point where concavity could exist. So we found that between plus and minus 1 over square root 2, that means between minus 1 over square root 2 and plus 1 over square root 2, the function is less than 0. That means it's concave down. So in this portion, the function is concave down. So we'll write, we'll show it in a different ink. So the function is kind of like this. Okay, let me push the page a bit in front. Okay, right. Similarly, we'll also now, I'm just squeezing in since I'm running out of space here. So let's, okay, so this, and let's now figure this inequality again for the second factor to be less than zero. So let's find it out when is it less than 0. So 1 minus 2x squared less than 0 will be. So we'll do the same thing. 1 is less than 2x squared or half is less than x squared or 1 over square root 2 is less than absolute value of x. Now if you're wondering why I'm writing x squared as absolute x in this, you need to check my video square root of a squared right? Square root of a squared is absolute x. So we have discussed that part very clearly, right? Now, so we get this inequality. Now, if this function is negative, that means less than zero, then y double dash will be positive, right? There's negative here, right? So we'll have, in this case, y double dash as greater than zero. y double dash greater than zero means it is concave up. So what we found here is if x is beyond 1 over square root 2, that means absolute x, that means in this and this portion, 
the concavity has to be positive, right? That means concave up, right? So it is going to be concave up. So we do have point of inflection at plus minus square root 2. Do you see that part, right? So we tested it out. Here, y double dash is positive. In this place, it is negative as positive in this region, right? So therefore, now we can write down our answer, which I'm just writing here as the point of inflection exists at x equals to plus minus. So at x equals to plus minus 1 over square root 2, we have point of inflection. Of course, the y value will be, we can plug in this value here, plus minus square root 2, so it will be that value will be y value, e to the power of minus this square, which is half, right? When you square this up, so it becomes e to the power of, so y value will be, in this case, y will be e to the power of minus, plus minus half will be always plus, square will give you 1 over 2, e to the power of half. So that is the y value at this point, right? So these are the point of inflection we just figured out and the coordinates for these points are, so in general, I'll write them as plus minus 1 over square root 2, that's the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is e to the power of minus half, that means 1 over e, so I'll write minus half at present, since I wrote this, right? So that is, that is the coordinate of y point here, right, which is 1 over square root 2, in a way. So this point is, or we can write coordinate here again, which is plus minus. So there are two points, plus minus, 1 over square root 2, and the other point is e to the power of, that is 1 over square root e. Correct? e to the power minus half is 1 over square root e. So that is our point of inflection. Correct? So that is how we are going to solve this problem. So I just wanted to squeeze my solution within this limited space, so looking for space all the time. Anyway, I hope you understand what we did. Now, the strategy is to find a point of inflection. What we should do is we should find the second derivative and get zeros, the critical points. Once we get the zeros, we need to analyze the intervals beyond those zeros, we got two zeros in this case, and so we, we need to analyze three intervals, minus infinity to minus 1 over square root 2, and the interval between minus 1 over square root 2 to plus 1 over square root 2, and the interval beyond 1 over square root 2 to plus infinity, right? You could have taken a test point in these intervals. Easy test points are 0, plus 1, and minus 1. Now, if you put those plus... 1, minus 1, and 0 test points in y double dash, you will get positive value for the interval from minus infinity to minus 1 by square root 2. And for 0 test point, you will get a negative value. And for 1, you will get a positive value, right? If you plug it in, if this is 1, minus and minus will give you positive value. So that one was a faster way of doing it. But I also wanted to show you the inequality part. This is kind of a different approach, but it's good to know all these approaches. So alternate way could have been, after this stage, just take test points. So your test points could have been, let me write those test points here, as 0, which is in between, plus 1 for this, and minus 1. So if you test these points for y double dash, you'll get positive value in this interval, negative value in, in between, and positive for the interval beyond 1 over square root 2. So that means the concavity changes at plus minus 1 over square root 2 and therefore we have point of inflection at these points. Correct? And so we get our answer. So you could approach, both approaches are good enough, rather the second one is better at times, but this is for your knowledge, the first one which I did. I hope that was an interesting solution and you learn. Now we are going to use this information in the next problem, a related problem, where we are trying to find maximum area under the curve for a rectangle. So there we will not show the point of inflection, but just use this information.
Thank you and all the best.